about sailing Balachandra, my son and I spend some time on the Gulf Coast, and I repair my chain locker door. Hey guys, so in this week's episode, I found some wet core on the deck around my anchor windlass switches. When they were first put in, there was an isolation issue and uh, some of the core got wet. So I dug out the core and replaced it with some fresh new epoxy and fiberglass. I also got my sails back from North Sails. I sent them in before Christmas and I finally got the call. They're ready and I picked them up and got them back. So I'm pretty excited to have my sails all repaired and ready to go for this season. Core is wet right around sort of this spot I think around these switches because I don't think these were bedded properly because these were new holes drilled in the deck in order to add the switches for the anchor windlass. Latch that holds the door closed goes in and you can see here that it had hit when it came down hard. Also I decided to probe this to see if this might have been the cause of the water getting in here and possibly not the switches that uh, over here that caused the leaking into the core. Uh, and so I stick my probe in here and I'm not getting any much wood or anything coming out. It's not a whole lot. Stick my probe into this big hole. It just keeps going. And there's definitely something mushy in there. And when I retract the probe, sure enough, wet wood. But I am not too upset because when I probe in this direction and I push, I hit dry wood. This is really important to take care of because the whole deck is cored. If this were to wick further and continue on, it could ruin a very large section of the deck, if not the whole deck. I'm going to remove these and take a look and see. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed the switch to the anchor windlass here. And there. Anyway, here's the core. They clearly didn't isolate the core when they installed this, these switches, and that's kind of a big no-no. I just have to remove some of this so I can fill that with epoxy and fiberglass and I'll inject foam and fill in this area that's now rotten away and I'll dig out what I can and then fill it with foam and then I'll over drill that hole and fill that with epoxy and then re-drill the hole so that I can still lock the anchor locker. Okay so I got my probe here we're going to test out this core and see just how rotten it is so I'm just going to Pick a general area. Whoa. So that went right in. That's wet core. Oh, we got wet core on this side as well. It only goes in to about there. So that's how much wet core I've got on this side to about there. And that's all right. So let's try this one. Okay, this guy's wet. What? That's wet over there. That went right through. Gonna be digging out some core. I might fill the voids with some some spray foam. All right, so I worked really hard and I dug out all the core that I could out of these two holes. I've got a bunch of different chisels and tools and things that I used. And I was able to remove like most of the core all the way back to almost all the way to the edge here. And probably a radius like this all the way around. Actually, most of it wasn't rotten. There was a little bit of rotten over here because that was exposed for a long, long time but uh, most of it was just damp or wet. We used the moisture meter on this deck. It was only just, you know, in this area here. So I hit that pretty good. I have a really sunny day here right now. What I'm going to do is just take this t-shirt. I'm going to cut like a, a square of black because black is attracts more daylight. Okay, so I threw this t-shirt here to help heat the deck up a bit better in the sunshine. I cut these holes here so that the vapor can escape, the water vapor that will evaporate when the core starts to heat up and starts to dry. And I've also got a heater running inside the boat so I can feel there's a fair bit of heat coming out and I don't want to lose that heat into the enclosure here. So I'm throwing this plastic container on top. So yeah, with any luck here I'll be able to dry out what's left of the core in here. So hopefully this works and I won't have to remove a big section of deck and then have to re-fiberglass the deck. All right, so I left all this out to dry for quite some time here under the enclosure, and it's a, another sunny day. I stick my hands in there and I can feel some of the core that was moist before, and it's dry. It's now dry core. So I've already sanded, and I over-drilled all these holes. So what I'm planning to do is take these strips. I'm going to turn these strips around into like a, a circle 
and then fasten them so I'll have like a ring. Okay, so here are the rings that I've made to fill the holes. They're screwed together with some old screws. You could bend them like this to fit them in the holes. And then once they're in there, I can expand them and use these holes here as a guide to know where they should sit. Simple as that. And then I have a barrier to know when to stop pushing epoxy in. Yeah, let's just show you guys what I'm using for epoxy. I'm going to be using some more of this uh, G-Flex 655 adhesive and hardener. I used it previously for my other fiberglass projects. So it works really good. For this will take at least a box, maybe in a bit more. I'm going to be using some fiberglass mat, but I'm going to be cutting it into little pieces and adding it to thicken it and, and so it's not just epoxy which could sag and not stick very well. But if I really thicken it up with this stuff, it'll, it should stick to the top and the bottom very well. All right, so my time lapse ended before um, I was able to finish the job, so you didn't actually get to see me pushing the glass in here, but then pulling out long strands of fiberglass right off the cloth itself and mixing it right into the epoxy. Uh, and then I just, with my fingers and a glove, just shoved it in as I went. It pushed up against those plastic rings I put in there, which was like the barrier, I guess, inside. And then I took some just thin epoxy, like without any fiberglass mixed into it, and pushed it into the little holes on top. There won't be any more leaks. It's a pretty extreme repair, but you gotta go this far if you really wanna keep the water out of the core. Um, I'm planning to inject some of this uh, gap in crack seal foam that you use around windows and stuff into the void of my fiberglass in order to fill in the, the open gaps that I left behind after I only sealed around those holes. So I know that it has rapid expansion and when you're rapid expanding in closed areas, it can be dangerous to solid fiberglass. I made a little test. I've got this little plastic container. I just want to see how fast it expands and get a feel for it before I start shooting it into my actual boat. I'm gonna give it a go and see how fast this actually expands inside this container. Here it goes. It doesn't seem to be expanding all that much, which is what I was concerned with really, was to see what would happen if I really pushed it in there. It kind of comes out the end here, but it's not forcing the container to fall apart or anything. So we'll give it a try in the boat and see what happens. Again, the goal here is not to add structure to the this void that I created. It's a small void. It's only just to fill it up with something and make sure it's watertight and there's not an air void in there. All right, so I sprayed the foam in there and it's just coming out. Um, it didn't make this crack. <laughs> this crack was already there. Um, it doesn't seem to have that kind of pressure. I shoved this long straw in here and I filled in where I thought most of the voids are as best I could. If it was a bigger job, I'd be ripping the whole top off, but this will do it. And then there's quite a bit of fiberglass in here, so I'm not losing any structure at all. Okay, I'm now ready to rebed my hardware. I've got my switches, and I've got butyl tape. If you can see here, I drilled all my holes already. All I have to do is attach the wires to these contacts and put butyl tape along the bottom. So I was just thinking about my sales and I think I'm going to give North Sales a call and have my sales inspected. I think it's a really good idea considering they're new to me and I just want to know that they are in decent shape and will hold up for the upcoming sailing season. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad. I have three sails that I took off my sailboat. They're like I, I think they're in good shape, but I just for reassurance I'd like to get them inspected. Do you guys 
Yeah, you guys do that. I suppose when they're looking, they'll just they'll have my phone number. They can call and say, well, we want to do this, we want to do that. And then I could I could just agree to have that work done to the sales then and then just sort of pick them. Yeah, that's that's All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so it looks like I can take my sales into North Sales. I'll look at my sales, tell me if they need to have any work done, and if they do need work done, they'll contact me, sort of like when you get your when you take your car in, something like that. One of my sales, uh, I, I noticed a, a few like patches that were put on at some point, maybe makeshift patches, and that's one of my areas of concern. So, I have my sales back from North Sales. Got some new sail bags on them, really nice. Uh, this is just one of them, the other two are in my car. They're really heavy. <laughs> so I just carried this one down here and I'll carry the other two down when I have some help. I almost died carrying this one down here by myself. But yeah, really nice new bags and pretty awesome to have my sails all repaired and returned to me. Also this summer, Noelle and I will be keeping the boat on a mooring. So pretty soon we'll be moving it out of this winter dock that we've been on for months and months and we'll be out on a mooring and it'll be rocky and rolly and fun and we'll be powering the boat strictly from the batteries and the solar panels. So it should get interesting, but we're looking forward to it and uh, we'll be buying a dinghy. Yay! So that's it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content and leave a thumbs up. And if you want, leave a comment below because I read them. Anyway, see you guys later.